Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Seventh Rule with Sirach Lofton and Robert Beltran. My name is Ryan T. Husk, and we are celebrating Aaron Eisenberg. How are you guys doing? Very good, thank you. Glad to be here. Right. Uh, so, welcome, Robert. Thank you, Sirach. It's good to see you. It's been a while. It's been a long time, yeah. It's been a while. And uh, I, I remember running into you in the alley many times while we were filming. Um, yeah. In those days, yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's you know, right. I, want, I want to hear all about that, Ali, but real quick, those of you just listening on audio, you're all good. Those of you watching on video, uh, Robert is uh, joining us just on audio, so that's not your computer. Don't worry about it, but you can see him right behind me with Aaron Eisenberg uh, in an episode in which they were featured very prominently together. Uh, but anyway, we could talk about that a little later. I want to hear all about this, Ali. No, I, I think we should talk about that now. I really... I, was, I, did, I didn't know anything about these uh, Rastafarian Kazan uh, <laughs> characters. So um, seeing Aaron Eisenberg in this, in this kind of a look is interesting to me. I, I, I would love to hear your comments on it, Robert. Yeah, it was, a, it was a really nicely written episode. And um, when Aaron was cast, I, I didn't know that he, maybe I did know he was on Deep Sea, yeah, I, I knew. Um, uh, but um, he was so, so much into uh, the episode and the character and, you know, being around him was always fun, always mm. fun. There was always a twinkle in his eye and he was always laughing, very witty and very, very, um, ready to have fun, you know, mm, yeah. always available. Um, so we had a lot of scenes together. And basically he, he plays uh, this, young bo this young man, a uh, young boy uh, reaching manhood and uh, this Kazon sect um, will not allow the boys to become warriors until they kill someone, right? In mm. battle, kill someone in battle. Mm -hmm. So he attacked me while I was on some kind of secret, uh, no, it wasn't secret, it was some kind of relig religious uh, sojourn on my own. That's right, yeah. The captain said, yes, you can go talk to your dead father somewhere else. <laughs> so um, I, I took a, a shuttle, and um, while I was on my way, I'm attacked by this boy, uh, played by Aaron, and uh, I end up capturing him, and that seals his fate with this case on sect, because if you're caught, that means that uh, you're not worthy and you deserve to die. Mm. So the Kazons, um, they captured me and um, I ended up saving Aaron, uh, Aaron's character. And he's trying to kill me the whole time while I'm trying to save him. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that sounds like him in real life too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wicked sense of humor, definitely. <laughs> so, um, in the end, uh, he kills the end of the leader of the of the Kazon sect, and he becomes a mighty Ooh. warrior. And uh, I, I just say to say to him, "Good luck in your new life." And uh, that's about it. It was a very good episode. I really enjoyed working on it. Can you tell us? Uh and this was the first time you'd met Aaron, right? You'd never met him before that. Um, this was like season two, maybe, or the end of season one? It was, uh, yeah, maybe it's two, season two. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think we had met before briefly, you know. You know, occasionally we'd, we'd run into uh, everybody in that alley, you know. And yeah, when I saw, exactly. Like, like if I ever saw Avery in the alley, I would, I would, I would say, hi, Avery, and run, right? So uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, <you> can't. <laughs> he turns out to be a, a really sweet guy, a wonderful yeah. guy. Um, mm -hmm. I wish I'd, I wish I'd uh, been able to spend more time with him. But uh, uh, yeah, so the alley was a nice place for us to kind of, uh, in bet you know, between shows, uh, you could go over and see what's happening on Deep Space Nice and vice versa. And uh, occasionally we would do that when we had the time. So, see, Sirach, yeah. he wants to talk about the alley, too. 
But before we do, uh, <laughs> I want to hear a little bit more, if possible, about about this episode because I mean I do remember it very well. I remember um, when it first came out, first run, you know, ninety six, give or take, and uh, you know they they sold it as such, you know, on the commercials. They said Aaron Eisenberg returns, or you know, Aaron Eisenberg on Voyager or something like that. And we were all excited. We're like, wow, the actor that plays Nog is going to play, you know, this, this Kazon character. So they really kind of, you know, beefed it up a little bit for us nerds. And uh, we ate it up and it turned out to be a really cool episode, episode, especially at the end. It was a really good, you know, twist and a moral as, as Star Trek always does. But um, Robert, when you start working with Aaron, you know, just kind of, Walk us through it. If do you remember like your first impressions of him, or does it all kind of become a blur from twenty years ago? Or you know, was there anything that stood out? Any scenes or? Well, the the, the thing that stood out the most was his was his uh, energy. He really loved what he was doing, um, and, and that's that's infectious when um, when you're tired, you know, and uh, mm. you, you're 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 in your twelfth hour on the set and. Uh, it's it's nice to have someone that keeps the energy going and uh, keeps things um, percolating. You know, that's kind of like what uh, Johnny Phillips used to do on our show. Yes. Um, but um, yeah, so I, I, his energy was was uh, apparent and um, always high energy, high, uh, very positive all the time, and and uh, it was just a. Um, uh, it was it was um the fact that he loved acting and that he loved doing what he was doing was just always there it was always apparent mm. and that was a yeah. great thing that was a great thing to be around Sirach, did you uh experience this on those 12th and 13th and 14th hours where you're kind of well i guess if you were younger they couldn't go until you're 18 beyond like 6 hours or something but later on did you oh yeah, I got my share. I got my share of late days and long days, and uh, yeah, everybody's energy gets uh, worn out on long days like that. Um, and that's why I can relate to Robert saying um, that having somebody who's enthusiastic, who's uh, has you know prepared and 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 there, keeps their energy level up is is critical for those moments when you're trying to pull through those hours, your hour 12, 13, 14. Yeah. Um, it makes a difference because um, nobody wants to be there even longer. So you want to get things right. You want to nail scenes. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but energy wise, it's, it's interesting to me that that's what stands out with Aaron because, you know, he only, well, he, he has a one chance to, uh, to guest star in this particular episode. So when you're guest starring on a show, as opposed to, being a regular recurring or a regular, um, your opportunity is limited. Is, is that is that correct, Beltran? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. So you have you have uh, a shorter amount of time to make an impression, uh, you know. And and being that the majority of you guys' scenes were together. Uh, you get to know right away if somebody's lacking and there's only two of you in the scene, you know? So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, no, I mean, it's, it's difficult being a, a guest star on another show. Um, it's kind of like going to a, it's kind of like going to your girlfriend's prom, you know, you don't know anybody. Uh, mm -hmm. You just feel kind uh -huh. of, kind of awkward. Um, mm -hmm. But, but um, Aaron just jumped into it and uh, the whole, the, the rest of the cast and the crew, we, uh, we just really had a good time with him uh, because, you know, he's a good actor too, a damn good actor. He knows what he's doing and he makes strong, interesting choices. Uh, mm -hmm. So, you know, we were dealing with a pro, uh, a real professional uh, who was absolutely digging what he was doing and uh, having fun with it. And he was totally accepted. I mean, it was it was a it was a good good energy to be around Aaron. So uh, first of all, you know that's always great to hear because he was always you know very cognizant 
and self-aware about how much he wanted to improve as an actor and wanted to make sure that he was good at it. But that leads me right into something I've been dying to ask you, uh, which is Ciroc, almost every day that he was sharing scenes with Aaron, Aaron would be asking him, is this, is the voice right? Am I doing the voice right? Is this, is this the way I'm supposed to sound? And, uh, <laughs> you know, two decades later, you know, uh, Aaron's saying the opposite to me. He's saying, am I sounding too much like Nog? You know, when we're doing other acting projects, am I sounding too much like Nog? Is this the same? Is this right? What do you think of this? So the world wants to know Robert and, uh, in, been over two decades so maybe you don't remember if so just make something up I guess but mm -hmm. did he uh did he ever ask you anything like that on set <laughs> no 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 <laughs> um so Aaron was Aaron was I think in his he must have been in his early 20s maybe mm -hmm. um and so and he was playing a kid of about 14 I think 15 maybe mm. um and so uh, he understood the character. Um, what uh, what he so so his his um, concept of the character was just very clear and 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 right for what for what was um, needed in the script, you know, for mm -hmm. what the script called for. And yeah. he was very assured. I mean, that was one of the things that really impressed me was that he was so assured, so confident. Confident. Yeah, You know, I think that's one of the biggest compliments uh, that somebody can pay Aaron is that he was a good actor. He and, was. Yeah, and he always wanted to be a good actor and be recognized as one amongst his peers. And hearing you say that, I know, would mean a, a tremendous deal to him because of the kind of respect he had for you and the kind of work that you, you've done throughout your career. Um, but to have somebody like you, like Armin, um, tell him that he, you know, relay that he was a good actor. I think that's priceless for Aaron. That's part of, uh, you know, it's, it's a notch on his belt that he's always kind of wanted and maybe doubted in some ways uh, sometimes about his own, you know, career. But sure, when you look back and, and, and you have other really talented people like yourself acknowledging that he was a good actor, I'm sure that he's smiling uh, upstairs. Well, I, I was made sure to tell him because I, I really did enjoy our, our scenes together and I thought he was terrific. And um, I, I remember the last day we just hugged and I said, man, you were, you were terrific. You were great. And, um, you know, he was just, he was just so grateful um, to, to be working, you know, and to, um, so I think I, I saw recently an, an interview with him where he was talking about how, how he had always uh, dreamed of having a career. And then when he was working on, on deep space nine, it, he had to remind himself, Hey, this is, the, I am having a career. Mm. Finally, this, this, this is my, my time during my career. I'm, I'm, I'm actually experiencing what I had always dreamed about. And, um, I thought that was, I, I remember having those, those uh, moments too when I was first starting. Um, you know, you're waiting for the camera to, to set up and the crew's working and you're just waiting to go on and do your scene and you start, I, I was, would start thinking, man, this is, um, this is what I wanted to do and I'm actually doing it. I, you know, I was just so grateful. Um, and and I, think, I think Aaron was always grateful. I, I, he never took anything for granted. But, but he was a great, he was a great nog. He was a great actor. Um, he was very intelligent, you know, and, and uh, yeah. he had his emotion. He could play emotions. Uh, he had his em emotions readily available to him. So when you have that combination of, of emotional availability and uh, intelligence, that's a great combination. That's a really good point about the emotional availability. It's almost like, he had those emotions on tap, like ready to go anytime he needed to bring them up. Whereas a lot of people, the difficulty is trying to bring up these emotions or find these emotions from somewhere to convey them on, on camera. But it's true that Aaron kind of wore his emotions on, on his sleeve and he was very in tune with how he felt. And he was very clear 
when explaining or expressing how he felt. He would say, you know, that comment made me feel insignificant or that comment made me feel really, you know, happy about myself or, you know, he's very, very in tune with that. And I'm sure that did help him a ton with acting. Yeah. 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 Um, you know, it's um, something that all, all of us actors want, we want, we want to be acknowledged by our peers that we, you know, that we're good and that we can stand with them and, and, uh, and uh, you know, not feel like we're, we're less than, than them. And, um, you know, both of us were in great casts. Sirik, Sirik and, and Nog had a terrific cast to work with and I'm sure great mentors for, uh, for Sirok since I'm sure you were just starting. Uh, Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, so it was a, it was a, it was really a, a great uh, thing for Sirok and for, Aaron to to be in that environment, and I'm sure I'm sure they learned a lot, uh, you know, at that age. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you have uh, not just the actors who are you know so accomplished, but just also the people in the production. You yeah. know, we we have uh, you know the best wardrobe guys, the best makeup artists, uh, set best designers. Uh, you know, some of the best set designers, some of the best camera directors, photography, all the people that are contributing to this process. Um, you know, all of them qualified, all of them exceptional, yeah. and um, it, it was a humbling thing. It was it was uh, a, a real opportunity for both Aaron and I, who are young and still growing, to to soak in, you know, the level of experience and the level of talent, and just learn by watching, you know, just by just by paying attention. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, there was um that you know i just i just the thing about the star trek was that um you had an incredible infrastructure that was there as you mentioned all the different departments were on uh, ready to to give the absolute highest quality that any tv show could uh, afford any actor you know we i mean i think it was two and a half million bucks an, an episode wow for our show, I'm sure it was the same for for yours. Um, yes, I and that was just Mulgrew's salary, there. right? <laughs> 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 that was two and a half million bucks per episode, which means a week essentially, because we're, yeah. we're filming yeah. every week, an That's episode right. a week, seven or so, eight days. Uh, yeah, yeah, seven or eight per days. Episode. Yeah, per episode. So that's how. <laughs> That's that's how much money is being burned on every seven days, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, Sirac, um, when yeah. Uh, when Aaron came back from that set, do you remember anything about like the next time you saw him? Like, did he come back and say, "Oh man, their craft services is way better"? Or you know, Sirac, <laughs> Sirac and you know Aaron what? famously it, 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 went yeah. over to the to the Voyager <laughs> set. <laughs> and you know, I said that they that they had the buffalo wings and complained that they don't have buffalo wings on a uh, Deep Space Nine. Did he come back and <laughs> that would started the whole thing? So well, th th there was a there was a, a silent uh, a silent uh, beef between Voyager and DS Nine. <laughs> we we always felt Voyager was getting treated better than us. Uh, <laughs> You know, because, you know, from day one, they rolled up with like brand new trailers and brand new production. It was all starting, you know, from a higher quality than where we started at. I think they <laughs> gave, when we started our show, they gave us the next generation's old trailers. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, so the leftovers. <laughs> yeah. They're like, yeah, you can have these. We got the new models. Uh, so, so we started over, we started off with leftovers. And then when Voyager started, <laughs> They started with brand new stuff. Everything was brand new. And their craft service was, you know, they had a higher budget for food. Uh, but no, but, but, you know, that was just like, a, you know, that, you know, like a, a cold war, a, a silent cold war. But no, there was no real uh, animosity there. I mean, I would run into a lot of the guys on Voyager, Garrett and, uh, you know, Robert Yu and, I mean, just Ethan. I mean, all the guys. I, I ran into a lot of the cast. I didn't yeah. see Kate as much. 
but I, I did see a lot of the cast and we, you know, we spent the five minutes or so or whatever time we had in that alley to sip some coffee and shoot the shit a little bit. And uh, we go back to work, you know? Yeah. Well, I have to tell you, Sirak, when I, when I would go over to Deep Space Nine, I would um, watch you guys working and I would, I would think, man, I'm in the wrong show. I should have been on this show. <laughs> wow. <laughs> we got to hear why now. Because, um, well, it's just a, per a very personal thing. Mm. You, didn't hear, you didn't hear a lot of uh, techno babble. You know, it was, to me, it was, it was much more contained, uh, much, much more about uh, relationships. Uh, and so that was, that, that's what I was always hoping would happen with Voyager. But, but we were always kind of stuck in the, in the um, tradition, the Star Trek tradition. You have to have so much uh, techno babble per episode. You had to have so much... Uh, bombardments and so you had to you know move your you know, act like you're, you're being bombarded you know at least uh, three, yeah. three times a show and you have to you had this uh inane uh techno babble that was you know there was just we were stuck we had to deal with a lot of cliches and i thought deep space nine didn't have to deal with that as much as we did and i always envied that mm. yeah that was one thing that uh the writers on our show did well was uh, have individual characters drive this drive the story as opposed yeah. to as opposed to the plot line and mm -hmm. so you and you had the ability as a character to just be the character as opposed to having to narrate you know how many gallons of nitro oxide for the <laughs> proton you know? yeah. I mean I used to get so I used to get so pissed off because I would I would be reading my script and a third of it is techno babble. Thinking, yeah. Why don't they just? Why don't they just cut back on this stuff and give like real relationships? I mean, mm -hmm. that's what people want. Nobody really needs to have all this techno babble and these these traditions that that I thought uh, kind of crippled Voyager in in some ways. You know, mm -hmm. not it, it wasn't like a death blow to the to our our show, but um, I think it hampered. Um, uh, possibilities you know because when you're when you're wasting two three four five maybe ten minutes a show on techno babble mm -hmm. and and a, a series where we're being bombarded by a by aliens that, that you know are never going to win and we're always going to make it through uh um no spoilers it, it, it's just um to me it's, it's a waste of time it's just like a, it, i think it, it gets in the way of, of drama. You know? It does, it does. And, and what it also does for us as the actors is uh, it's not easy to remember any of that stuff because you don't mm. understand it, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and it's, you know, as actors, we, we process the, the words, we process the feelings and the emotion of the script and what's happening with the dialogue. And we're able to recite it because it, it, it's real to us. We make it real. Yeah, but it's hard. But it's hard to make something real that's so far abstract that the reverse the polar field of the of the proton, you know. <laughs> yeah, those kind those kinds of things are they're so far out there. You know, only only a, a Harvard physicist would really be interested. In it. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. If you do reverse the polarity, it would shift the magnetic stream back down towards. <laughs> that, yeah, that, that appeals to such a small group of people you know the rest of us are sitting here trying and so it hampers the performance because I'm, I'm actually literally I'm having to think of it you know I'm having to remember it and think okay what is it what do I have to say dinutrium dinitrate you know as yeah. opposed to just thinking hey what are you doing over there get away from there you know that's you know that's easy uh, yeah yeah I mean nowadays if you were playing a mechanic and had nothing no, uh, nothing you knew nothing about uh, cars you would right. still know, basically, you've heard uh, what an alternator does. You've heard what a carburetor mm -hmm. does. You know, you, you've heard... Yeah. Uh, you, you're you much have a general to... understanding, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You've heard the word before yesterday. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yes. You know, that, that often makes me think that, like, even, even possibly worse than that are the actors that have to act in an alien language. They have to speak in Klingon 
and they have to act like they mean what they say when they're not literally not even saying words. They're just yeah. making noises. But yeah, we, we definitely feel bad for those of you guys that have to do the techno babble because you have to deliver it in a way as such like that you believe what you're saying, not just that these are just lines. I would love to have spoken Klingon in place of uh, techno babble. <laughs> <laughs> because if you messed up, really, oh, like 100 people would know, you know. <laughs> I, I, would, I would love, I would have loved that. <laughs> he said, that's an easier job than that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But it is true, though, that uh, Voyager was kind of monster of the week. You know, I mean, we, we kind of know what the formula was, whereas uh, Deep Space Nine was about family. It was about relationships. And that's just a, a totally different way of storytelling. And part of what made it so gripping to, to me and to others was just that it was about relationships. It was about how people affect each other more so. It was, it was not, not so much the struggles of the outside coming in, but the struggles of the inside, you know, of the, the people on the inside. Yeah, yeah. There was a, there was a, a, a psychological um, underpinning to, to the characters and to their being, being on that Deep Space Nine station. And um, so it, it, was, it was about... Uh, it was about relationships, you know, and that, that always, that always a uh, psychological um, subtext is always a part of that. You know, and that, that's what makes acting fun to me. So Rock, did Aaron tell you anything about his experience on Voyager or was it just kind of like you didn't see him for a couple of weeks and then he was back on the next episode? <laughs> <laughs> uh, he didn't tell me my, I mean, I don't remember. I have to be honest with you. I don't remember if he came and said something mm -hmm. about it. Um, but I want to touch on something that Mr. Beltran was saying a little bit earlier, and that was living the dream as you're standing on the set and you're in the moment and you realize this is what I want to do. This is what I want to be. Um, uh, I wanted to expand on that because I felt the same way while I was working on the show, you know, standing yeah. there, you know, on this, on this elaborate set, um, you know, looking out at the stars, <laughs> gazing out at the stars, literally. Uh, yeah. And thinking to myself, wow, this is, you know, this is where I want to be. This is what I want to do. I'm living my, I'm living my dream. Mm -hmm. And uh, you alluded to that, Robert. And I also kind of uh, empathize with Aaron having that same kind of uh, feeling of, of living your dream when you're, when you're in those moments. And some of the thing that's difficult is whether you recognize it at the time that it's happening or if it takes you later on down the years to reflect looking back. And yeah. Say, you know, you know was, that was actually a good time in my life, you know? Yeah. Well, you know, I think that, um, I think that there are actors who sort of feel entitled, you know, that, of course I'm here, of course this is what I, where I should be, and of course it's gonna get uh, only better and better and better in my fantastic career because I'm fantastic, you know? Uh, there are those kind of actors. Um, the, the ones that, re that remain humble um, still have that um, sense of gratitude, that sense of um, it didn't have to be this way, but I, I'm just so, I feel blessed, you know, yeah. um, that I'm able to make a living, a very good living doing this uh, in this career that I, that I chose. Uh, yes. Because most, most people don't, are, are not able to do that. Most actors, uh, what is it, like 90, 92% are never working, uh, are not working at, at any given time. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, we're, we were incredibly lucky and we're always incredibly lucky when we're cast in something is it the odds are just too much in favor of you not getting cast <laughs> right yeah. right for for any role yeah uh, for, let, anything. Let, for let alone a role that uh will be remembered or 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 last last throughout uh us to the time so you know um, if they were doing a movie about Sirach lofton and robert veltron we'd have to audition for our for it <laughs> Probably wouldn't get right. it. Right, and we wouldn't even get a movie about it. Chances ourselves. are, I mean, the, the chances are is pretty slim. <laughs> you know, like, we'd have to... Snoop have Dogg to is playing me? Really, yeah. Snoop? Jeez. They'd have Will Ferrell, probably. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> it's my name, my movie. <laughs> Uh, yeah, <clears throat> yeah, that's, that's very true. And, you know, one of the things that I, uh, I thought really discredited or disqualified the legitimacy of the acting profession was the beginning of reality television. Mm. And as reality shows started to dominate and, and become more popularized, I felt that they, uh, reduced the... Uh, amount of integrity that and respect that's associated with the, the craft of acting, you know, as a skill, as a profession. It, it was like anybody can, we can put a camera on anybody doing anything and they're, they can entertain just as well as somebody who's a trained profession. That's well, basically. I, I think you're right. I think you're right. Um, uh, you probably have had the experience, Ciroc, where somebody comes up to you, uh, I, for instance, I had uh, I was touring the colleges, doing uh, some Shakespeare with about four or five other actors, and uh, inevitably the theater act uh, one of the theater uh, majors would walk up to you and go, "Hey, who's your agent?" And I would, <laughs> I'd say, well, "Why?" He says, "Well, um, you know, I'd like to I'd like for, I'd like to meet an agent so I can start working when I, you know when I graduate here. Uh, I mean, if you did it, I'm sure I can do it." Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it works that way. Yeah. <laughs> and I would hear that from everybody. Uh, but you don't, you don't approach anything else in life like that. Like, you don't go to the doctor and say, hey, man, uh, <laughs> how'd you get this gig over here with this uh, stethoscope, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. Can, I, I can read a pulse and take your, you know, take yeah. your blood pressure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, what's difficult about that? And it feels like every, it's like everybody assumes that, you know, I could be an actor too. Yeah. Uh, there's no, you know, but they don't, they don't assume that about being an electrician. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Go play with hey. those wires over there and just assume that you can be an electrician, you know, but as hey, an doctor, actor, yeah. yeah. Hey doctor, where do you, where do you buy a stethoscope? I want to, I'm going to be a doctor yeah, too. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, who reps you, man? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you signed to Cedar Sinai or you got your own thing happening? Yeah. <laughs> so you know, a lot of people do that just with, with looks too. Like they'll say, oh, I can't believe, you know, th that lady got this role, but my daughter looks twice as pretty as she does. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That, I mean, you're right. I mean, you got to act too. I remember a, a, a musician friend of mine did a, this was back in the 80s. He did a, a very famous uh, mu music video with a big, big star. He was a guitar player. And um, he had a nice feature, several moments in this music video. And he got a lot of attention from it. And then uh, one time I was talking to him after that and he goes, uh, yeah, I'm going to get into the acting uh, into the acting business now. And I said, oh, you are? Wow, okay. He says, yeah. I said, so where are you going to study? And he goes, uh, uh, oh, I, I don't need to do that. I have, <laughs> a, I have a knack for it. I said, okay, <laughs> great. Knack. Good luck with that. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. So I know we only, have a, amazing. we only have a couple minutes left, but I did want to uh, finish off with uh, asking specifically, uh, Robert, if there's anything regarding Aaron, a memory, a, a trait, a, a moment that you think that people should know about, you know, something, something about him that a lot of people may not know or something that you'd like to share about him? Well, the thing, the thing that in retrospect, you know, I, um, I knew that he had had operations before and that, uh, mm -hmm. that maybe he was living on, uh, that you know it could happen any moment and when Aaron wouldn't be around I, I didn't think it was going to happen this soon honestly I didn't think it was going to happen this soon over the years I saw as he got older uh, I saw him it was in his eyes that maybe there was some pain physical pain uh, not emotional I thought he was I thought he was really really uh, advanced human being in, in, in some ways I always thought this is a this is a special guy a special person that understands something about life um 
But I saw, I, 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 when I would see him and we would talk, I thought I saw fatigue or, which, which he never, which he was able to overcome by his, by the sheer uh, love of life that he had. You know, this uh, sparkle in the eye, he never lost. And he, his repartee was always there and he loved to laugh. Um, but, I, and so what, what's, what I remember about him was, uh, what re comes to me in retrospect is the courage, the great courage he, he must have had. He obviously had. So courageous to, to know that uh, it, it could all end, you know, and uh, to not let that color the way you go through life. Oh. You know, uh, he, he lived, I, I would say he lived as fully as, as probably anybody I've ever known, every day. Um, and that's, that's one of the things that I just uh, admired so much about him every time I was, it was, see, you have to understand, it was always great to see him. It was always great to see him. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, because he was just such a, a fun person to be around. And, and so when... Most of the time uh, at these conventions or other places where I might have seen him, um, when I knew he was going to be there, I, I would I would seek him out because I wanted to say hello to him and talk to him a little bit, see how things were going, and um, because he had this he had this energy, this positivity, this this uh, aura about him that was uh, something that you really enjoyed being around. Yeah, you know, real quick. Uh, Robert, you brought up the conventions. I, I, I often think about that. Did you ever kind of watch him for a second at conventions and see him kind of like talking with everybody and being everybody's best friend and just kind of think to yourself, man, how does he do it? Yes. That, yeah. I mean, that's, that's what I'm talking about. It, mm. Especially in the, in the later few years where, where I thought I saw fatigue setting in. Um, but still, uh, it, it, it never, it never overcame him. He, he was, uh, you would forget about it because it, it was a feeling that was not, that was almost subconscious when I would see him. It was, it was not something, it was just a little, a little something that I, that I was getting, you know, that was not uh, fully developed in, as, as a thought yet, but I, I thought I, and I wasn't even thinking, oh no, we might lose Aaron soon. That, not at all. It was just, hmm. Uh, Aaron's, Aaron's, you know, it's subconsciously I'm thinking, uh, Aaron's a little tired, seems a little tired. Mm. And then you would remember his condition, you know, and, and but it, it was quickly forgotten because he would, he just didn't, uh, he, that's not a place where he lived. He didn't live in that place. No, no. But I thought it was interesting that you mentioned that because um, <clears throat> when his son was performing uh, at his funeral, uh, one of the songs before he uh, performed it, he introduced him, introduced it as a song that his dad wanted him to play at his funeral, which essentially, uh, you know, let us know that that was a conversation that they had. Mm. Uh, yeah. So, uh, as you say, you know, you the fatigue that you that you picked up on subtly. Uh, was something that may have been aware that he was aware of and, and started to make plans for, but he never really, never really showed it. Like you said as well, he didn't wear that down. He didn't let that get in the way of that sparkle in his eyes. No, 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 never. Um, yeah, you know, it, it was. Um, I, I think I can safely say that that we were friends. You know, I didn't. The last few years, you would see him at conventions, and then you wouldn't see him for a long time. But there was there was this uh, connection that that he and I had, as he did with other actors. Um, I was uh, visit. I was I was um, shocked and and uh, saddened uh, when I heard about him, about his death. Um, it really upset me that uh, I, it's, it's just because it was it was too too early for him and the, we lost such a great human being you, you don't run across that that kind of person very often it was yeah, very it sudden was, and everybody was was very shocked by it because it, it came completely out of the blue uh what were you gonna say Sirach? 
I think a, the other shock is that he's created this little warm space in everybody's heart. Mm -hmm. This this little warm. Not that little. Just, well, it's just, <laughs> this, it, it just makes you smile when you think of him. You yeah. know, uh, in a, in a, he has a pleasant uh, memory. Is yes. what he is what he leaves us with, and when it was this sudden, just you know, taking out of our guy. Um, it, it it reminded us all of that of that little space that he's created inside of us, where we warm towards his memory. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember thinking, man, I'm going to miss him. I'm going to miss him, yeah. even though a year could go by before I saw him uh, again. You know, yeah. Um, I, I, it was one th one thing that I thought very clearly was, I'm going to really miss him. Yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, um, Aaron and I stopped doing this show uh, 18, 19 years ago. Yeah. And we would see each other at conventions. Um, but it was always like, it didn't matter how much time it was in between us seeing each other, we would always pick up exactly where we had left off. <laughs> yeah. Did yeah. You ever uh, feel like, did you ever feel like when you would see each other for the first time in a year or two that you are 15 years old all over again. It's kind of like, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, to, to a certain, to a certain degree, you know, like if we hadn't seen each other in a while, I'd run over there, give them, uh, you know, a big hug. And that's just how we, you know, that's how we were. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it just, it just felt natural to do that. There's just, there was no, he was my guy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, we got to run now, uh, but Robert, thank you so much for joining us. That you you definitely have that unique perspective on Aaron. That not only was did he come on to your show, but on top of that, he was just in the one episode, like this little encapsulation of Aaron in yeah. the seven year uh, journey of your show. But then on top of that you were the guy sharing the scenes with him in, in a very poignant episode. So, you know, we're really happy that you came to join us. I, I, in retrospect, I feel very lucky that I was able to have that experience with him. Mm -hmm. um, we, we became friends because of that experience. And so it's, it's a, it's a very beautiful episode to me. And, and I mean, just very few actors have a chance to be on more than one Star Trek show. That's just a fact. That's right, yeah. Uh, uh, and leave, leave an impact in, in each show. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, that's just a credit to his talent. And you right. said it best when you talked about his emotional availability mixed with his intelligence. I think that's just, that really yeah. sums up who he was. He wore his emotions openly on his sleeve but he was very intelligent about how he uh, carried himself. Yes. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's really what you want. That's what you want in an actor. You know, that's what you want. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, I think we all agree. Sirak, I hope I see you soon, Sirak. I do too. I hope to see you too, man. It's good um, to see you. You look great. It, it, oh, thank you. Thank you. You look great too behind uh, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry. I've been blocking him. There you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, are, I, I, are you in are you in Los Angeles? I am in Los Angeles. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, we have to get together. I'd love to. I'd love to. I don't. You know, I'm uh I'm available anytime you like to meet. Okay, that's that's good to know. You feel Absolutely. like doing some theater? Um, I could try. Um, but we have to get together. It comes up a lot, Sirac, when when. Um, yeah. I'm, you know, when, the, when they're talking about actors of a certain age, um, and I'm talking to other actors as well, you know, there's Ciroc and, and I'm thinking, yeah, Ciroc. Uh, so that's why I brought it up because your name came up. Uh, well, I'm not turning down any jobs anymore. I've, I've gotten over that part. <laughs> uh, so. Any yeah. opportunity I, I jump on. So if you have something or if you know about anything, yeah, let's look into it. Why not? Okay. All yeah, right. Yeah. There's a little bit more to that question than, than meets the eye there, Ciroc. Uh -oh. <laughs> but he'll tell you about it later. Um, yeah, uh, thank you so much, Robert, for joining us. And uh, Thanks for having me. It was really great to share, share this thank with you. you guys. 
And those of you at home, thank you so much for joining us. And always remember the seventh rule.